Hey guys, this week's NXT video is going to cover proportional line following for an NXT robot. Now, the first step in this process before we even build the line follower is find out what kind of light values we're working with. And what I mean by that is we need to measure the reflected light value of the white and the black and also in between. And the reason for this is a proportional line follower doesn't so much follow on the black line as it does follow the edge between the black and the white. And so what happens is when the sensor is halfway over the black and the white, it's going to see a kind of in-between light value and it knows it's on the right path. If the light value is becoming too dark, it, need, it needs to turn in one direction and if it's becoming too light, it knows it needs to go in the other direction. And in this way, it's going to keep itself halfway between the black and the white. And so to measure these light values, you're going to go on your NXT over to view and you're going to scroll over to reflected light intensity and choose the port that your sensor is plugged into. I have sensors in both port 1 and 2 so just choose whichever you like and then it's going to give you the reflected light intensity. So you can measure it with the sensor completely over the white with the sensor completely over the black. These two will be just for reference and then your target light value is going to have the sensor halfway over the black and then halfway over the white. That's going to be your target value. And after you have these values, now we can go and build our program. After we've measured our target value, now we can go on to construct the program. But first I want to give you a little explanation of how proportional logic works. What we're going to be doing is setting our target value, in this case it's a light value, and we're programming the robot to measure how far away from this target value it is. The farther away from the target value, the greater the magnitude of the correction. And if it's at the target value, of course it's going to know not to make a correction. And in this way, the proportional line follower gets its name, because the correction is proportional to the error. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to make the program now. We're first going to take a variable out in order to define what our target is. We're going to go up to Edit, Define Variables, and create a new variable. I'm just going to name the variable target because that's easy to remember and we're going to make this a number variable because we're going to enter a percentage. So after that's all set up we're going to close this, go back here, select the new variable we just created and we're going to write its value. Now this is going to vary based on what you've measured but let's say I've measured a light value of 35 percent when the sensor is directly between the black and the white, halfway between. That's going to become our new target light value. Next what we're going to do is take a loop block just like this. We have it repeating infinitely but you're going to want to choose some kind of case to break out of that loop when you get out of that line. But that's going to be just based on your specific situation. Moving on, we're going to take another variable block. We're going to set it to our target variable again Instead, we're going to be reading the variable this time. So whatever value we set here is going to come out of the block. What we're going to do again is take out a light sensor block. And it's important to use light sensor and not color sensor because color sensor doesn't necessarily have all of the functions that we need for this program. So choose the port that you have it in. In my case, I'm using port 1. Again, that varies based on whatever you're doing. That's all we really need to do for this we're going to take out a math block set it to subtract and now we're going to take the intensity from our light sensor and put that as A and the value of our variable is going to be B so what it's doing is it's taking the light sensor's value and subtracting the target value which is 35 and what this does is if we're at the target value it returns a value of 0 if we're too far on the black side of the line we're going to get a negative value so that tells us to turn one way. If we're too far on the white side of the line then it's going to give us a positive value and tell us to turn the opposite direction and that's what this subtraction block is used for. The next block is optional. Now this is the point in the program where you're going to have to ask yourself which side of the black line are you going to be following. If you're going to be following on the left side of the black line then you can just ignore this next step. However if you're going to be on the right side of the black line you need to add an extra multiplication block that multiplies this output by negative one because if you think about it 
If you're driving on the opposite side of the line, you're going to need to steer in all of the opposite directions. Otherwise, it's going to steer off the line. But like I said, if you're on the left side of the line, you don't need to worry about this. We're going to do yet another math block. This is again going to be set to multiplication. And this is going to be another arbitrary value that's adjusted based on your specific situation. Now, I'm going to just put that as 5 right now but I encourage you to play around with this value and what this value does is it scales the correction up and the larger you make this value the sharper the corrections the robots going to make and of course if it's smaller like say three instead of five it's going to make smoother corrections and like I said this is something that you're just going to have to adjust by yourself um, just experiment on your own And I realize here that I kind of there we go, now I've corrected this mistake. Moving on, after we have that done, we're going to take one last block, this move block, we're going to pull this out, we're going to take the result from all of these math blocks, the final end result, and set that as our steering. And of course we want to adjust the settings. This power level can be whichever you want. Of course a lower power is going to be more stable than a higher power, so that's all going to be your decision we want to set this to unlimited and of course we want to make sure that our motors left and right motors are configured properly under most circumstances and in my circumstance you're going to want motor B to be your left motor motor C to be your right motor so it's important to switch that because by default the NXC has motor C as the left motor and it's important to have this because if you don't switch it to match what you actually want to be your left and right your robots going to drive in all of the opposite directions and you don't want it to do that and yes I do realize that this negative one multiplication and this uh, multiplication by five can be compressed into one block but since this one block is optional I decided to kind of keep it separate from the others for the sake of the video but you can certainly condense these two if you feel like you want to thanks for watching my tutorial this week if you found it helpful be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week and if you have an idea for a tutorial be sure to submit it in the comments section below thank you and I'll see you next time bye